As we embark on our adventure, soccer friend, let's take a deep breath and imagine that we are all snuggled up in a cozy blanket surrounded by warmth and comfort. Tonight's story is the one that will transport us to a magical world where anything is possible. We'll meet heroes, maybe a couple of villains, travel to far off lands and experience incredible adventures together. So let's close our eyes, relax, and get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey that will fill our dreams with wonder and excitement. Uniting a Nation Once upon a time, when the fields were green and the fans were loud, people all around the world were turning on their television sets to watch the World Cup. The year was 1998, and France was hosting the World Cup for the second time. 32 teams gathered from all around the world to compete for the trophy to determine the champion of the world. I could tell you a story about the goals of Bergkamp, the heroics of Owen, or the resilience of Croatia, but this story was all about a team that was all those things and more. A team that brought people together, a team that made a nation believe, a rainbow team that brought their country together, even if just for a brief period of time. Le Bleu, as the French team is affectionately known, was coming into the tournament as a team reborn out of a national failure. In 1994, France didn't even qualify for the World Cup. The coach Aime Jacquet had replaced aging veterans with younger players just beginning their international journeys. This young team was a quick target for the French media and those that refused to accept immigrants as fellow Frenchmen. Zinedine Zidane, just a young man in 1998, was the son of Algerian immigrants. Marcel Desailly was born in Ghana, Patrick Vieira in Dakar, Senegal. Players had connections to Armenia and Guadeloupe and all the corners of the old French Empire. For some in France, particularly a man named Le Pen, this disqualified them from being Frenchmen. For the players, it was an opportunity to represent a land they made home and the countless people who did embrace them as Le Bleu. As they prepared for the tournament, they were viciously attacked by newspapers and TV personalities. Their coach in particular criticized for picking the wrong type of players. Emile ignored those and cloisters hid his team in the woods of Clairefontaine away from the media and those that would distract them. The team united behind their vision and mission to try to lift a trophy for their countrymen. Once the tournament started, it was clear the team was ready and focused. They swept away the competition, defeating Saudi Arabia, South Africa, and Denmark. The games were highlighted by goals from youngsters Thierry Henry and David Trezeguet, who were unexpected participants in the tournament, both barely 18. Led by captain Didier Deschamps and veterans such as defender Laurent Blanc, the team was united and weaving a tapestry of the nation many wanted France to be. The second round proved to be a much more difficult challenge to overcome. Paraguay, who had eliminated Spain and Bulgaria, would not be intimidated by the home team. Entering extra time, tied at 0-0, the world witnessed a golden moment. Back in those days, extra time could be decided by a single solitary goal. A golden goal. One goal, the first goal would end the match in favor of those that scored it. In the 114th minute, Perez broke through the Paraguayan midfield and played a ball to an unmarked Trezeguet in the box. Not being able to head towards goal, Trezeguet redirected the ball down and across the box to an unrushing Laurent Blanc. Playing far out of his defensive position, with a confident kick, he ended the dreams of the heroic Paraguayans. France cheered. 
In the dramatic quarterfinal clash between France and Italy, both teams fought fiercely for a spot in the semifinals. The match unfolded in the Grand Stade de France, filled with passionate fans eagerly anticipating a spectacle. Despite this intensity, neither team managed to find the back of the net during regular time, or the golden goal in extra time. The match, destined maybe, to decide it by the nerve-wracking penalty shootout. As the tension mounted, players stepped up to take their penalties. The French team, led by their captain Zinedine Zidane, exhibited poise and precision, while goalkeeper Fabian Barthez made crucial saves that thwarted the Italians' efforts. Ultimately, the youngsters Thierry Henry and David Trezeguet again emerged, making the pressure-filled penalties to decide the match. France emerged triumphant, securing their place in the semifinals. The semifinal proved a surprising matchup for the now surging Le Bleu. They faced minnows on the dark horse of the tournament, Croatia. That country was led by leading goal scorer of the tournament, Davor Sukar. Croatia had just emerged from a civil war and the hopes of an entire nation were on the shoulders of Davor Sukar and his team. And in fact, it was the target man, Davor Sukar, who in the 46th minute, right after emerging from halftime, scored a goal and put his nation ahead. Alas for him and his country, it was not to last. Guadalupe-born Lillian Thuram was largely to blame for Sukar's easy goal. The defender was an exceptional soccer player, known for his strong defense and versatile skills and his mistake was surprising and could have been devastating. However, just a minute after Sucre's goal, he equalized the game. And 23 minutes after that, he scored from deep in the box a goal that any striker, Davor Sucre, Zinedine Zidane, would be envious of. Celebrating by sitting and striking a philosopher's pose, he was perhaps letting all the fans reflect on what he and his teams were about to accomplish. Croatia could not come back, and France advanced to the final to face the pre-tournament favorites Brazil and their star player, the best in the world, Ronaldo. The final was held on July 12th at the Stade de France at the outskirts of Paris. The air crackled with anticipation as the world held its breath when news broke of the Brazilian striker Ronaldo's last-minute exclusion from the starting lineup. Only minutes later, he was to be reinstated, right before kick. The drama ensued. In the 22nd minute, Ronaldo, sick and weak, perhaps not ready to play, danced on the pitch nonetheless, his graceful feet leaving defenders awestruck. Weaving past Duram and Pires, he crafted a mesmerizing cross that goalkeeper Bartes struggled to handle. However, it was France who broke the deadlock, as Zidane leaped high to meet a corner with a powerful header, leaving Brazilian defender Roberto Carlos in dismay. 1-0 France and the Rainbow team. With the halftime whistle fast approaching, Zinedine Zidane, the French maestro, struck again. This time, nodding home another corner to double France's lead. The game continued, and the tides shifted when France's Marcel Desailly received his marching orders, a red card, leading the host team with ten men. Brazil, inspired by France's setback, made an attacking substitution and unleash relentless pressure. However, it was too late, and it was France who delivered the final blow as substitute Patrick Vieira orchestrated a swift counterattack, setting up Emmanuel Petit to bury a low shot past goalkeeper Claudio Tafarel. The stadium erupted in cheers as France sealed a memorable victory, etching their names in football history. The night belonged to France, their name written in the stars, 
illustrious tale of triumph crafted on the canvas of the beautiful game. The rainbow team, victorious, celebrated with their countrymen on the famous Champs-Élysées. More people gathered to celebrate this team than had gathered to celebrate the end of the Second World War. The lessons they taught us will forever echo in our hearts. They showed us that diversity is strength, that unity can overcome any obstacle, and that dreams can become reality with hard work and belief. Le Bleu taught us that a shared love for the beautiful game can bring any nation together, transcending differences and fostering a sense of belonging, even if just for a moment in time. As we drift off to sleep, let us remember the spirit of Le Bleu and carry their message of inclusivity, resilience, and unwavering passion in our own journeys. Sleep well and dream big, soccer friend.